Hey guys, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today we will be venturing into the realm of Kubernetes networking and looking at container networking interfaces, in particular Calico. So let's go. An overview of container networking interfaces in Calico. A CNI is a interface that is essentially a specification by Kubernetes as to how we want to interact with networking resources. So Kubernetes have essentially given a specification of the list of actions or commands that it expects to be able to perform when provisioning networking resources for its pods and containers. Then a particular CNI plugin will, will implement those particular commands or functionality. So the container runtime is what invokes the CNI. So you could think about a, a pod provisioning type scenario where, um, you know, the the pod is sent through the API server. It's, it then gets to Kubelet. Kubelet invokes the container runtime, and then the container runtime in turn invokes a CNI in order to provision the different container resources that are. The different networking resources that are required. So it manages the connectivity between containers. So when we're looking at networking in Kubernetes, there are, there are a couple of challenges that we have to overcome. The first one, uh, and a fairly simple one, is to manage networking inside a particular node. So pods within that node have to be able to communicate with each other. But a more complex requirement is that we have to be able to communicate between pods on different nodes. So we will talk about how that is achieved um, by a couple of different means using the Calico CNI plugin. But we will first look at intranode networking. So the networking that goes on inside a node in order to provide that functionality of communication within the node. So what does the Calico CNI plugin configure? It configures VEC interface pairs. So these are L2 interfaces that provide communication between the network namespace of the node and the namespace of the pod. What is VETH? VETH is a virtual ethernet and it is generally used in exactly this kind of scenario to bridge the gap between two different network namespaces and that's what we're doing here. On the pod side it's generally just ETH0 and then on the um, node side we will see a list of these um, different VETH interfaces that are prefixed with CALI. So if you go into, um, if you log into a node and run if config, for example, you'll get a list of all of these different um, Kali interfaces. And each one of those represents uh, the connection between the node and a particular pod that you have deployed. The CNI also configures a pod IP address, as you can see here, and it adds a route for the pod to the outside world, as well as a route for the host to the pod. So in Kubernetes, as I've mentioned in a prior video, we maintain IP tables for our routing. In this case, you can see our routing table here it tells us that if we want to go to this pod IP address, we have to route traffic through this particular interface. And the same thing if we want to go to this pod IP address, we have to route traffic through this interface here. So this is L2 communication. So that's the data link layer in the OSI model. Um, if you're not familiar with the OSI model, um, I can potentially make a video on that in the future. You can just research that yourself. But the OSI model um, contains the primary 
So the primary um, levels that we, we generally have to consider are the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, and the application layer. There are the session and presentation layers in between at layer six and layer five, but we uh, don't tend to use those as much nowadays. So, so it's kind of reduced down to uh, a five level networking model. And how do we add these particular routes to our container? Well, this is done by a, a daemon that is run in the node called Felix that is associated with Calico. It's installed when you install Calico um, and that goes away and sets up these routes. Now let's look at inter node networking. The first example that we're going to look at is IPIP, which is just one method of achieving internode uh, networking. So the connectivity between different nodes and the connectivity specifically between pods in different nodes. So if we look at this diagram here, we can see that there is additional network interfaces that have been provisioned. So these are tunnel zero interfaces. That's how they're um, generally named. If you check if config again, or IP adder or whatever tool you want to use to check your networking interfaces. And what these do on a basic level is they wrap the IP for the pod, that is the destination IP, with the IP for the node. So you can imagine if we want to route some traffic from this particular pod, we have to know the node and the pod that is the destination. So if, our, if this is our destination uh, pod, this is our destination node, then we will have one packet that contains the pod IP, and then that packet is wrapped with the node IP. And that allows us to send to the node first, then unwrap that packet, and then forward it on to the pod. And this is sort of how that would look. We have the source and the destination IP for the node, source and destination IP for the pod. So as I mentioned, the, the tunnel zero interface is a IP IP protocol interface that is responsible for this um, encapsulation that takes place here um, to, as I said, wrap those particular network uh, packets. There is, I should note, there is, you know, going to be extra layers on top of this. Like, for example, we're going to have to include our, you know, L2 communication frame outside of this. Um, but this is for simplicity's sake, how I've represented it, because these are kind of the key uh, components when it comes to IP IP uh, everything else is sort of generic to just sending or communicating back and forth uh, between different hosts so the node IP header encapsulates the pod IP pod packet is unpacked when it reaches the destination node so that means that we remove this layer when we reach destination nodes as expected. And BIRD is a BGP agent that is used alongside our IPIP network interfaces. And that is responsible for setting up the routes when we need to communicate with uh, pods in a different node. So as we saw before, Felix set up these internal routes that tell us what uh, internal network interface we need to use to communicate between pods within the same node, but a different um, process called BIRD is used to send out to the other node the information in terms of routes um, and set those up in IP tables in all of the other nodes in the cluster. So if we create a new pod on node one, all of the other nodes need to know how to route traffic to node 
to that pod on node one. So this is done via bird, which is our BGP agent in the IPIP um, configuration for Calico. Another method of setting up our internode networking is VXLAN. So this is a, a slightly more complex method in terms of the uh, encapsulation that is done when routing traffic. Um, so VXLAN is essentially a extension of VLAN, which is a, another way of setting up a, an overlay network. Um, what do I mean by an overlay ne network? It's essentially a network that provides a, a logical method of routing between different hosts that are not necessarily connected by a physical connection. So what does this um, look like? The, the, the difference is that you'll see this vxlan.calico interface configured rather than our tunnel zero interface that we had on the previous slide. Um, and what this interface here is, is a VTEP, which stands for VXLAN Terminal Endpoint. And this particular interface is responsible for all of the data encapsulation, setting up the UDP tunnel that is required for communication in this method of internode networking. Um, and sort of the flow uh, is shown here as we route traffic from a pod, it goes to VXLAN. This is where we'll build up that uh, information around our network packet that is required to forward it um, to the other node. So that is then sent through the ETH0 of each node, and then it, it reaches the um, VTEP on the other side. When this is uh, this connection is established, then we actually set up a UDP tunnel on a particular um, port, and this is now a transport layer level communication. And at this point, we can just, from a logical perspective, just send. Um, data directly between the pod on node A and the pod on node B. So it establishes logical communication routes. A VTEP is a VXLAN tunnel endpoint, as I mentioned, and it, again, it's just a network interface that provides all the functionality to encapsulate uh, our data that we want to send with uh, all of the relevant information needed to, to route it to whatever particular pod um, in whichever node we want to route it to. Provides the connection between overlay and underlay. So underlay is the actual uh, physical hardware that may be uh, you know, distributed across uh, unconnected networks it handles encapsulation. So as we can see here, we'll go through this in a minute, but there's, there's quite a few layers of encapsulation that it provides and it does not use BGP. And that is the reason why you will see um, such a sort of complex setup when it comes to encapsulation in comparison to uh, IP IP. All of the, the relevant information is uh, encoded in the actual um, data frame that we're using or packet to, to keep it generic. So how does that look? At the um, outer layer, again, I've stripped this down because outside of what you see here, there will be another IP layer. And outside of that, there will be an ethernet layer. So uh, we can just ignore that for a moment. So what we have is our UDP with our source and destination port. We also have a VXLAN header within that, and that is encoding uh, certain information relevant to the VXLAN um, protocol. So we're not gonna 
jump into the, the details in this video because we're, we're trying to keep it a little bit shorter but um, that's just information relevant to VXLAN. Inside this we have our Ethernet source MAC address and our destination MAC address. So um, MAC addresses are essentially the equivalent of IP addresses but just at the L2 layer so they're not globally um, identifiable like IP addresses. They're only relevant to the specific uh, internal network that you're on. Then inside that we have our source and destination IP addresses and um, inside that we have whatever particular request we're trying to send, in this case ICMP. So if we go back to our diagram, how does that translate? So at the outer layer we are running UDP, so as we see here that's our furthest out layer of our onion. Inside that we have Ethernet, so that is the communication between the nodes. Inside that we have our source IP and destination IP, and that is our pod source IP, pod destination IP, and then inside that it's our ICMP uh, source and destination that we have um, specified over here. We want to send a, a ping request to this other pod, and that was the actual internal, the most internal layer of our request. And as I said, it does not use BGP. So that is our overview of Calico, an explanation of how it works, and a couple of different options that we have when we're deploying Calico. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.